We previously used dummy coding to analyze categorical variables in a multiple regression analysis. We ended that video series by noting that dummy coding is ideal for situations where you have one group to which you want to compare all of the other groups. It may be a control group or a business as usual group and, and you want to test the effect of several different interventions against that one specific group. Or, or maybe you want to compare students who take part in several different sports with students who don't take part in any sports or, or people who have several different health disorders to a, a group with none of those disorders. Dummy coding makes a lot of sense in those types of situations. But what if you don't have a group to which you want to compare all of the other groups? What should you do then? One solution is to use effect coding. Now, in contrast to dummy coding, effect coding compares everybody to the mean of the group means. <laughs> now, that sounds a little wordy, but I'm going to use that more cumbersome language because that's what it is. And I, I don't want you to be confused be with the grand mean, which is the, the sum of the individual scores divided by the total n. For example, the, the grand mean for these four groups would be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 all divided by 10 which would give you a grand mean of 5.5 but <laughs> that's not the mean of the means it's not the mean that we're talking about with effect coding the mean of the means is the, the mean of the group means. In this case, we have four groups. So the mean of the means is the mean for group one plus the mean for group two plus the mean for group three plus the mean for group four, all divided by four or 2.5 plus six plus 8.5 plus 10 divided by 4, which gives us a mean of the means equal to 6.75. All of the group means are treated equally. The, the mean for the large group isn't weighted more than, than a mean for a small group. In essence, scores are viewed as reflecting the mean of the means plus or minus some group effect. All right. Now, ultimately, your question should determine your coding scheme. As we said, effect coding can be particularly useful when there is no referent, comparison, control, business as usual sort of group. Maybe you want to give everybody an intervention and then determine whether all of the interventions work equally well or do some stand out either positive or negatively. Okay, effect coding lets you compare different intervention effects to that average intervention effect. Okay, now let's reanalyze the data from our dummy coding example in which we examine differences in verbal SAT scores based on four different academic programs. The standard curriculum, a math-focused curriculum, a language-focused curriculum, or an intensive curriculum. Now, yes, I know that with our standard curriculum group, this data looks ideal for dummy coding, but we'll use effect coding because I want to directly contrast the two approaches. Right? Now, we have a total of 400 students in four groups with 100 students in each group. And here we see the, the mean SAT scores for each of those four groups. So we first make our effect codes. Now, it's similar to what we did with dummy coding in that we make a set of variables that each indicate membership in 
one specific group. Just like with dummy coding, the number of variables in effect coding is equal to the number of groups minus one. One group doesn't get an effect code. Each effect code will compare one group to the mean of the means. Now notice that given the number of effect codes is one less than the number of groups, one group does not get compared to the mean of the means. We'll talk about what happens with that group and how you may want to deal with it later. But it's important here to recognize that they're not the referent group. There is no referent group. Groups are being compared to the mean of the means. Now, the values for the effect codes are also similar to dummy coding, with a little of, twi of a twist this time. First, if someone belongs to the group that corresponds to a specific effect code, they're coded one on that effect code and zero on all of the other effect codes. That's just like what we did with dummy coding. But, and here's the twist, if they belong to the group that does not correspond to any effect code, that, that last group that doesn't get an effect code, they're coded minus one on all of the effect codes. As a result, values on effect codes will be one, zero, or negative one. Now, to clarify this, let's look at some data, uh, well, at the same data from our dummy coding example, and we'll recode it using effect coding this time. Okay, we'll use the same groups for the same coding variables. We'll have a, a math-focused a math focused curriculum effect code. I've added E at the end just to clarify that it's an effect code. We'll also have a language focused curriculum effect code and an intensive curriculum effect code. The standard curriculum will be that group without a specific effect code. Now, why don't you pause the video and, and using the rules we just described, see if you can complete this table on your own. All right? Restart the video when you're ready. Okay, let's see how you did. Keith is in the math focus curriculum, which is one of our three effect codes. So he would be a, a one for the, the math curriculum effect code and zero for the language and intensive curriculum effect codes, right? Then we have Lori, right? Lori's in the, the language focused program. Um, now that's also one of our three effect codes. So Lori would be a, a one for the language effect code and, and zero for math and zero for the intensive effect code, right? Then we have Danny. Danny's in the intensive curriculum, which is also one of our three effect codes. So he would be a, a one for the intensive curriculum effect code and, and a, a zero for the math curriculum effect code and a zero for the language curriculum effect code, right? So far, so good. Just like what we, were, we saw with dummy coding. But now, what about Chris? Chris is in the standard curriculum, which is not one of our three effect codes. So Chris would be coded as minus one on all three of the effect codes. That's the difference, right? And that's where students mess up sometimes. They don't make every effect code minus one for people in that group. So don't make that mistake, all right? Now, once you've got this down, you just apply this pattern to all of the other students. Uh, pretty straightforward once you remember to use three minus ones for individuals in that group that's not captured by one of the effect codes, right? 
Now, just like with dummy coding, academic program isn't a single variable. It's made up of the three effect coding variables as a set. Right? So that's also just like with dummy coding. Dummy coding are three dummy codes as a set, reflected academic program. Our three effect codes as a set reflect academic program. All right? And also, notice that we've we've changed the data, haven't we? Right? It's it's similar but but different. Specifically that that last group down here that was the reference group for dummy coding and, and coded all zeros. With effect coding, it's all coded as minus ones. What does that do to our analysis? Is that group going to change things now? Well, let's run our multiple regression using these three effect codes and we'll find out. All right? So first, let's look at the ANOVA table in our regression output. We get an F with 3 and 396 degrees of freedom, um, equal to 4.642, and a p-value of 0 0.003. <laughs> that sounds familiar. It's exactly the same result as dummy coding. F is exactly the same as it was before. Now, this may surprise you at first. I mean, we changed the variables around a bit. How can we end up with exactly the same F value? But conceptually, when you think about it, it's still the same construct of academic program. We're still measuring academic program. We have four groups and three variables that uniquely identify every student as belonging to one of those groups. And whether we use that using dummy codes or effect codes, the three variables as a set are still doing exactly the same job, identifying which group someone is in. The set is still the same overall construct. It's kind of like you can call me Craig or you can call me Mason. Both identify me just in different sorts of ways, right? In this case, the fundamental information that's contained in those three variables, which group do you belong to, is the same whether we use dummy codes or effect codes. The F is exactly the same because it's the exact same information. It's the exact same academic program effect. Now, given that, you may be less surprised now to also find out that it accounts for exactly the same amount of variance. Our R squared is exactly the same as it was when we did dummy coding. The, the set of three effect codes, our academic program effect, accounts for 3.4% of the variance in verbal SAT scores. Again, because it's still the same construct, academic program, just recoded in a different sort of way. So effect coding gives us the same results for the overall effect of academic program. This illustrates that it's still the same thing of academic program even though we've switched from dummy coding to effect coding. Pretty cool, right? Now let's wrap up this video here. In our next video we'll focus on the coefficients table. Is everything going to be exactly the same when we look at the regression coefficients? All right. I'll see you then. Take care.